Hi, I'm Lyle Jamison. Uh, welcome to Traverse City, Michigan. Uh, as you can see, uh, this is a, a working shop. This is not a classroom or a studio. And I have 40 YouTube clips on, and those old uh, clips came from uh, some of my DVDs and some that were made uh, two years ago. But uh, now I've got a little, uh, a little more gray hair and a little less hair, but uh, uh, I'm going to do a uh, series of uh, project-oriented uh, YouTube clips. There's a lot of pieces of the puzzle that I'm going to cover over uh, a number of different projects that uh, will help uh, get some of that information to you and, and, and spread it out a little bit. Um, I'm going to do a, a thin wall goblet. Uh, what's a goblet is a, is a hollow form with a stem. Uh, and, and so it gives me a, a very quick way to go through the hollow form process. So that's what we're going to do here. Okay, we're going to start off with a, uh, a piece of tree. Everything that I do, I start between centers. Why do I start between centers? Go back to my control issue. I want to be in control of the axis and orientation of this so that I can get the best use of this piece of wood. I want, if I'm doing a goblet, I want to be nice and straight with the grain so that the stem of the goblet is, is strong and the, the grain pattern uh, is nice and balanced coming up into the goblet and down into the foot. Um, and I'm going to start between centers because I can move it, I can adjust it to, to find that perfect spot. I'm going to go for spectacular, not uh, settle for whatever uh, a, a bandsaw or a round piece of, of uh, stock might do. I want to rough this out and give myself information so that I know that I'm going to be uh, getting the best piece out of this. I might uh, have a flaw or a fault I want, might want to remove. I might have a flaw or a fault that I might want to use as an accent. So who's in control? I'm in control. I'm not going to let the piece of wood dictate. I'm going to put this where it's going to be the best. The second reason I'm going to start between centers is I have to prepare a good way to hang on to the wood without vibration and without any risk of it coming off. So I'm going to start between centers and I'm just going to start very light, just very gently. I'm just going to touch and we can zoom in on this a bit. We can just touch the center and let the wood go and watch what happens. The weight goes down to the bottom. Okay, I'm going to lift it up from there so that I start on the balanced point. If I start with a piece of wood that's off balance, I'm going to have vibration. It's going to flop around and I have to have a slow speed and what does a slow speed mean? That I have to go tonka tonka to uh, get it round. And I don't like tonka tonka. Tonka is not easy. Tonka is hard. So if I get the lathe speed up, that means that I can turn the, the, the rough, rough it out faster and easier. And so I'm going to get on the balance point to do that. Okay. I'm going to get the tourist up very close. If we can get a close-up of this, I'm going to get the tourist up very close to the wood. Because when I turn it on, it's just a blur. It's spinning around there so fast I can't see where the wood is. Okay. Get my face shield on. Start to hog this off. Okay. I'm going to push with my thumb away from me. Okay, one of the things that I usually do is I almost always use green wood and this is very, very dry. So I'm going to use dry wood so that I can finish this goblet right from start to finish and sand it right in front of you here. Uh, normally I use green wood. Okay, so now I'm going to take a look at it. Uh, looks like I'm starting to get round. I'm going to go another session of hogging off here. One thing I want to do First is to give myself information. I'm going to look at the ends. So I'm going to take a cleanup cut on the ends. Take a good look at this here. I want to see if there's any little check. Okay, let's look at the other end. Mm -hmm. 
Again, take an inspection. Oh yeah, that's looking good. Nice and clean. Okay. I'm going to make this a little bit smaller diameter and then we'll put it on a faceplate. This end uh, near the tailstock that I'm working on now is where the faceplate's gonna go. I'm gonna leave that a little bit bigger. Come down here and make this top where the goblet's gonna be a little bit smaller diameter. All right, when I made that little cut there, I made a concave surface. So now when I put my faceplate on it, the faceplate's gonna seat around the rim and have a good steady grip on it instead of uh, any hump in the middle and any vibration that might cause. Okay, next what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to pilot hole, drill uh, pilots for the screws because this is dry wood and it would split. In wet wood, most of the time I just screw the screws right into wet wood, but I'm gonna pilot this and then I'm gonna screw the faceplate on. Now we're ready to put it on the lathe. We've got a real secure grip with the faceplate. Much uh, better, more powerful than we can with a chuck. And I've got the tailstock removed now and we'll get this on and get ready to make a, the outside shape. We're gonna do the outside shape first and then we'll hollow the inside. Okay. Okay, while I was hogging off and, and getting rid of the waste wood, I'm just pushing the sharp edge straight into the tree, into the side of the tree. And I'm gonna to continue to do that a little bit here to, to start to make even the a shape a little bit. As I go in here, I'm gonna to start to go in a little bit further to develop a little bit of a shape of fibers. And that means that we need to, to go from the largest diameter to the small diameter. We're gonna go downhill to the fibers as we make our cut. So it's always gonna be from the large diameter to the small diameter with the direction of our cut. And that'll leave a cleaner cut than if we were going the opposite way and we we're gonna go backwards and each one of those little fibers gets torn out. So once we start to make a shape, we're gonna to start to go from the large diameter to small. So now I'm gonna bring my handle way back over here and I have the bevel lined up on the, on the largest diameter and I'm going to make the cut downhill to the fibers and just push my handle away from me. I'm going to make a rounded surface and the bevel's going to follow the line. Okay. Take those little bumps off first. Okay. Now from the large diameter down to the bottom, I gotta bring my handle over here, bevel support first, and bring my handle towards me to come around the bottom. All right, so I'm going to tuck this in a little bit and make a little bit of a, of a shape, a little more bulbous shape here, always downhill to the fibers. If I want to get rid of some of this waste wood, I come back this way and go downhill to the bottom. And then come back up here with the bevel support and swing my handle to make the curve line. Tuck it in the bottom. Okay. Oh, that's starting to get kind of the shape that I want. I'm going to go one more. Tuck it in just a little bit more. And I step back and take a good look at it and make sure all of the design, all the creativity, all of the fun is the outside of the hollow form, okay? So we want to take our time and get that perfect. Okay, we've relocated the camera now so that you can see when I do the finishing cuts on the outside of this, I'm going to do a shear scrape. I'm going to lower the handle and close the flute and very, very gently going to shear scrape that contour. Very delicate, little tiny angel hair shavings that when I get done with this cut, my goal is to start sanding with 320 grit sandpaper, okay? So now I'm going to come around to the back side and do the same thing on the back side, turn it around the other direction and try to shear scrape the other direction, okay? Always going downhill to the fibers from the large diameter to the small. All right, handle down, very steep angle. 
very gently. Now what happens is that the waste wood starts to get in my way, but I need that there for stability. So I'm going to do a different cut on that last little bit. I'm going to use a spindle gouge. It's got a steeper grind to it. It's going to give me a little cleaner cut because this is curly maple. It's going to it's a very difficult and dry at that curly maple, so it's going to be a little bit difficult to get a clean cut. So I bevel support first and do a pushing cut with a steep angle so that I can clean up that bottom. I don't know if we could see it in the camera there, how clean that surface is. Okay. Okay, now uh, because this is dry and I, I can sand it now, I'm gonna, going to sand it. And uh, we don't need to uh, uh, watch me sand. I've got a, a sanding uh, clip already on DVD. But so I'm just going to go really quickly through this. I'm going to slow this all down and and sand it using sharp sandpaper. That's the whole deal for sandpaper. You have good tool control. You don't have to sand much. Okay, let me make a cleanup cut here. That Okay, now I've got that all sanded down to 600 grit. It's just smooth as a baby's butt there. It feels so soft and sensuous. Once that's sanded, uh, the tool control made the sanding real quick and easy. Okay, so now we're going to drill a pilot hole in here just to have our hollowing go easily. So I'm going to use a little pointed scraper and I'm going to make a little cone shaped hole in here so that the drill will self center itself before it starts drilling. Okay, I don't need the speed up, I'm going to slow the speed down. And if you want to use a Forstner bit or other drills in your tailstock, that's fine. I've just got a handheld drill here. The drill is not a depth gauge. I'm not going to drill all the way to the bottom of my hole. I'm just going to guess where the bottom's going to be and stop short of that because I don't want the drill hole to dictate my bottom. I've made some ugly vessels because my drill hole's too deep. Okay, so that drill hole just opens it up a bit to makes it makes it easier on the hollowing process. Now we're going to set up the boring bar system. Okay, we're going to set up the boring bar system now. I could do this hollowing by hand, but uh, I'm going to use my captured system because of the laser. The laser makes it a lot more fun and easy to do. So we're going to put the backrest on and the boring bar on and the safety pin in. Okay. Now I have to set the front tool rest so the cutter is cutting on the center line or slightly higher if I'm now let's zoom in real close here and watch what's going to happen how I'm going to use my fingertips I'm just going to put my hand on the tourist for stability because it moves real easy and I'm just going to use my fingertips make the cut coming across and hollow this out I'm just using my fingertips. The first thing I did is I made that drill hole so that I can start there real easy. The second thing I'm going to do is just hog out the middle of that. I'm just making a cylindrical shaped hole here with a system set up correctly. You cannot get a catch. It'll never get grabby. Okay, we've got the laser set up so that it's, it's moving with the boring bar. It's all connected and the laser light's going to shine down and I'm going to set the laser so that there's a gap between the laser and the cutter. Okay, so we get a close-up in here. We're going to see where the laser is. I'm going to use this card to help me gauge where the laser is in relationship to the cutter. I need the, the gap to be perpendicular through the wall. The gap is our measuring device and so that, that gap has to be 90 degrees through the wall. So the long line is a tangent. That's the area that I'm going to be working on in the first part of the, the goblet. 
the arrow line is the 90 degrees to that, the perpendicular to that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this and set this on the right angle, bring it over to my cutter, and I'm going to set the laser so that the dot is on the arrow line. Can we see the laser on the camera? The laser disappears when the, the gap is left behind. That gives me my wall thickness. The gap is what we're working with. And every time the laser disappears, I stop. Okay, now we'll go back to regular speed. I'm gonna take this out now, and I'm gonna redo the laser because as we come around the bottom, we have to make the gap perpendicular through the wall, so we're gonna to have to change the laser setting. See where the laser is now is for the top part, and the laser needs to be, the gap needs to be around in the bottom. So I'm gonna reset the laser for the new gap. Okay, double check it. Now I can hollow out this bottom part. Okay. Now I'm only going to hollow out what's already done on the outside. Clean up my tool marks, get it nice and smooth. So I don't have to, I don't sand inside, but I want it nice and smooth and you can take it with just fingertip control. One of the tricks to the control is a candle, wax. I'm putting wax on the boring bar, the tool rest. Even if we zoom back, we can get it all back here. We can get wax on everything where it's moving and we're floating on a little thin layer of wax that gives me fingertip control to clean up the tool marks. Okay, so now I'm going to close, uh, close this down. I'm going to take the, the boring bar off and we're going to finish the outside shape a little bit further down so we can hollow some more. Okay, we've got the uh, hollowing system out of the way now. We're going to come in here and uh, finish some of this outside. We're going to do the outside in stages, remember, so we we still can't go all the way down to the... Okay, now I got my face shield on. Um, we're not going to go all the way down to the size of the, the stem, but I need to get this back behind the goblet finished further down, and I only have to hollow just a little bit behind it, so Again, we're going downhill to the fibers. Remember, large diameter to small diameter, large diameter to small diameter. Okay, now we're getting down to maybe about an inch diameter here. I want to leave some strength here, but uh, I can't go all the way down to the goblet size. So now I'm going to finish the bottom shape. Need to tuck that in nice and rounded. Stop and take a look. I need to go just a little bit more and I think I'm going to pick up my spindle gouge again because I want that to be clean and make a nice clean surface there so I don't have to sand much. Going downhill to the fibers. Very slow, gently clean the cut up. Okay, all right, let me stop and take a look. Wonderful, okay. Now I'm gonna sand that off camera and uh, get it ready to, uh, to finish when I get down. I need to sand each stage. If I wait until I have a stem there to sand, then the stem is too weak, so I've, I've gotta do all this ahead of time. So I'm gonna sand and then we'll come back. Okay, now we've set the, the boring bar back up and the, the laser's on. And look at where the, the gap is now. When I'm working on the bottom of the vessel, the gap is 90 degrees through the wall. So I'm going to work in that bottom area that I just uh, finished the outside and got it nice and smooth and sanded. Now we're going to go back on the inside. Okay, I'm going to go back over here where I already got done. This is already done. See the laser's gone, right? I'm going to come back in here and work on it some more. Measure, measure, measure. Make the laser disappear. Okay, now I'm going to clean up the tool marks. Listen for that little hiss. 
All right. Now I'm going to get right in the middle where the drill hole was, okay? And the drill hole is gone, okay? So two things have happened now. The drill hole is gone and the sidewall is done. All right, I'm going to blow that out. What I'm going to do now, I'm, when those two things are done, the drill hole is gone and the sidewall is done, I'm going to do two things differently. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to set the laser right at the tip with no gap this time. Okay, so I pull it back just a little bit. No gap. Okay. Tighten it up. No gap. All right, now when I'm in the bottom with no gap, I know exactly where the inside is. Okay, can you see the pencil line on there? So now, this is one of the things that I really get excited about, the laser. I can see the depth of the inside of my bottom of a hollow form, and I can also see the shape. If we're coming across here, we can watch that the shape is kind of flat across the bottom and then goes up the side. Okay, so we're, we're able to see through the waste area. I'm going to make this a little bit deeper. I want to go a little bit further in there. So the second thing that I need to do in order to go further without the drill hole is I need to set the tool rest so that it's right dead dead on the center line. So with the lathe off, I'm going to scratch a line across the bottom. Okay, and most of the time I'm going to need a flashlight. And I'm going to look in there and see that I'm high. I'm maybe about an eighth of an inch high from the center hole. Okay. So now I have this threaded post and I know this is a one inch eighth post, so one eighth of an inch is one revolution here. Rolling it on once, okay, down, now we're going to test it again. Scratch the line across the bottom, stop and look. Oh, that looks close, it might be there. I'm going to try to test it. There's just a remnant, a little remnant of the drill hole still left in there. So let's see what it feels like in here. If I'm in the bottom, that's going to just melt away like butter. It's not going to fight me. And for all you people that have done hollow forms with handheld tools, you know the nub, the dreaded nub. When we're on the center line, there's no more nub issue. Oh, it looks like I got lucky. I'm probably right on it. Okay, so now I'm going to come over. And if we watch the laser, we can watch the laser go on a nice rounded surface, nice smooth arc. Okay, I'm going to stop and see. Oh yeah, beautiful. Clean as a baby's butt in there. Alright, so that's done on the inside. Alright, now we're going to take the, the boring bar off and we're going to finish the outside of the goblet. Okay, the boring bar is off. Let's get back in uh, and finish the, the stem of the goblet now. The inside is hollow uh, and nice and cleaned up. So all we're going to do is go down here and get rid of all this waste wood now and get down into the stem. All of this waste wood is needed to hold up the goblet and make it stable. And I'm going to take the stem down and work my way down in small stages, just a little bit at a time so that it doesn't vibrate. My tool rest is just a little bit too high. It's fighting me a little bit, so let's get down. There we go. Back up, finish that stem, sand as I go. Okay, now I wouldn't part this off. We go to regular speed here. Now I wouldn't part this off all the way because it will tear up that center little nub will get all torn up and, and apt to uh, 
pull out a pocket of, of stuff in there. So I'm going to cut this off. We're going to have just a little nub in the middle of the bottom to finish here. So I started with a little concave surface with my uh, parting tool and then we've got to finish that little bit by hand. Okay, we got uh, 20 different people out here in the audience. There'd be 20 different ways to get that little nub off. Carve it off, cut it off, grind it off, sand it off, whatever, use a Dremel Fordham, whatever. Um, I'm going to go over to the, uh, the drill press and show you how I would do it. We're at the drill press now and all I have is a, a two inch disc sander and I've got a coarse uh, grit uh, sanding disc on it and we just grind away at it. We just take it on an angle like this and just twist it, grind away, twist it, grind away, twist it, grind away until it's all gone and smooth. So that'll take a few minutes but uh, I would rather do that than risk uh, damaging the, the piece. Okay. All right, uh, that's it. Uh, I hope that helps uh, with a little bit of hollowing and uh, a, a little bit of goblet, uh, but uh, some pieces of the puzzle along the way. Uh, don't forget to subscribe and uh, check like. Uh, please visit my website. We'll put a link uh, down at the bottom for my website. It's got lots of resources on my website. I've got a newsletter that I publish once a month, uh, the DVDs that I've done, the articles that I've written are all archived in there. So uh, thanks for watching. Uh, comments are welcome. Uh, turn safe and have some fun at it.